Hello viewers, and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest video production. My name is Mitch, and I am the Hive Tyrant. This is the third entry in a series of videos in which I'll review and discuss each and every Warlord and Signature Squad we've seen released thus far, and today I'll be focusing on the best and worst aspects of the very first of our Orcs Faction Warlords. Keep in mind that although at this point we've seen the release of each and every expansion of the Warlord Cycle of War Packs, in this video I'll only be a Assessing the card synergy contained within the confines of the core set. And although I'll be covering the other core warlords, the non signature cards of the core set, and eventually our various other war packs, that's going to have to wait until later videos. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at what the very first of our Oryx Warlords has to offer. He is the unique unit Nasdreg, with an attack value of 2, 7 hit points, the Warrior and Warboss traits, a starting hand size of 7, 7 starting resources, and the text each other unit you control at this planet gains brutal which is a keyword that means each unit with brutal gains plus one attack for each damage on it and this effect is cumulative so if a unit has multiple damage tokens it'll receive an attack boost of an equivalent side and on Nasdreg's bloodied side he has no ability whatsoever and while his attack value remains at two his hit points drop up to a pretty miserable five. So, taking a look at Nasdreg's absolutely most superficial aspects, he does have reasonably good stats. He's on the high end of our core set warlords when it comes to attack value and hit points. So even though he runs the risk of his ability being shut down completely if he happens to be bloodied, he at least has a fairly sizable pool of hit points to keep him conferring that brutal keyword to as many units as possible for as long as possible. Something that I definitely like about Nasdreg is, contrary to Colonel Strachan that we covered in our last Warlord review, his ability doesn't just affect units based on their traits, but it affects every single unit that you control that happens to be sitting at the same planet as him. So not just warrior trait, not just soldier trait, but any unit, regardless of trait, regardless of faction, that happens to be at that planet. And just like I mentioned, there's absolutely no limit as to how high the attack value of any of these brutal keyword units can become. Under ideal circumstances, having that brutal keyword distributed to all the different units at the same planet as Nasdreg will hopefully allow you to get some very high attack value, very hard-hitting and powerful attackers, but really, contrary to the somewhat bumbling, mindless, stereotypical orc presentation, it takes a lot of finesse and concentrated effort to really play this warlord to the utmost of his ability, and it really takes a lot of expertise to not only get as much combat efficiency as possible out of your various units, but also to play the cards in your deck to get the most for their value. Particularly given that Nasdreg and the Orc faction cards end up dealing a hell of a lot of damage to their own units in addition to their enemies. Even though I already mentioned that at the time of this video we've seen the release of the full Warlord cycle of war packs, our card pool is still very much maturing. So this Warlord, and again the Orc faction as a whole, might not play quite as flawlessly as a lot of players are hoping, and while you might have some games where his ability works spectacularly well and you're able to destroy immensely expensive enemy units with some cheap ones of your own, I think just as often, if not more so, you might find yourself floundering and really struggling to overcome a, a more advanced or experienced opponent by merit of your trying to accumulate those damage tokens on your own units, you expose yourself to a multitude of enemy card effects that might take you by surprise. 
For instance, if you've been collecting two, three, or even more points of damage on individual units with the hope of swinging and scoring a, a very efficient kill on a more expensive unit, you might be taken for a nasty surprise when your opponent deploys something like a Zinch's Firestorm, or an Elysian Assault Squad enters play and kills off some of your units. Really, your opponent has countless different effects that they can try to leverage in their favor to take you by surprise and really punish you for trying to get the utmost of that brutal keyword and Nasdreg's ability. Having multiple damaged, let alone heavily damaged units is generally an undesirable kind of game state to be in, and for better or worse, that's really what this Warlord keys off of, to try and get the utmost of his ability, so although it does have fantastic potential, new players in particular are nevertheless potentially exposing themselves to a lot of very disappointing games and really frustrating situations. Probably the simplest way to work around Nasdreg's ability is just focusing down individual units. For instance, Orc, Astra Militarum, or Chaos units that have already attacked and are already exhausted don't actually get to take advantage that combat round of any additional damage tokens that they accumulate. And as soon as you can play an event or something like that to generate the 1 or 2 or X number of additional damage to finish off a unit, all of that hard work you might have spent investing different cards and other effects, distributing and redistributing damage, might just all be for naught. Your opponent could simply play ranged units to pick off some of your wounded, very hard-hitting attackers during that ranged skirmish round, or if they can leverage the initiative token in their favor, that gives them yet another opportunity to really shut down your brutal units. And of course, since Nasdreg confers this ability to units that happen to be at the same planet as he is, if at any point he has to retreat, or he's wounded to the point where you're not comfortable with him being in a combat situation anymore, you're suddenly no longer benefiting from this Warlord's ability. So, even though he himself can act like quite a bit of a damage sponge, he himself does not have Brutal... And at least to me, it seems exceptionally easy for any opponent to throw a wrench in even the most carefully planned of orcish designs. But it's not all bad, because Nasdreg certainly does punish your opponent for using area effect type abilities or any kind of card ability that deals small points of damage that are allowed to accumulate over time. Certainly a lot of different orc units have reasonably high hit point values, even though the amount of resources you might have to invest in them also happens to be fairly high. So really, if there's any point that I can drive home, it's to do your math very carefully when using Nasdreg, probably to err on the side of being a little bit conservative when damaging your own units, but really, probably the absolute best advice I could give to any Oryx player is to just read up on exactly what the different possibilities are of your opponent's deck. So to be aware of any direct damage type events they might opt to include, whether they're loyal, whether it's part of their Warlord Signature Squad, or whether it's something they don't have access to. And also it's probably very important to keep in mind how many copies of a specific card your opponent's played. So, if you know that they've spent all of their direct damage cards as shields, you can rest all the easier knowing that there's one or two fewer nasty surprises that might turn up at an inopportune moment to ruin all your carefully laid plans. I think it is definitely unfortunate that the Orcs as a faction, and Nasdreg in particular, have a rather wide margin for error. They definitely strike me as one of the more difficult to master factions, and again this Warlord in particular, but once you've gotten some experience under your belt, I nevertheless think that Nasdreg could be potentially enormously powerful, and as with 
every other faction, every other warlord as our card pool continues to expand. He'll simply get all the more consistent, all the more reliable, and hopefully receive all kinds of different new effects that can really turn him into an absolute powerhouse of a warlord and kick the orcs into overdrive as a faction that's not just capable of ridiculously high attack values, but hopefully becomes all the better in regard to their resource cost to attack value efficiency type units. In regard to cards that Nasdrag combos with, or has excellent synergy with, he certainly works very well with high hit point units, again, whether they're Astra Militarum, Orcs, or Chaos, and cards like Hostile Environment Gear, or Rune Encrusted Armor, that confer additional hit points to units, allow you to take even greater advantage of that brutal keyword. You just have to be sure that you don't put all of your eggs in one basket, in regard to having a very small number of very damaged, albeit extraordinarily high attack power units, just because it would be a damn shame to be attacking with a 10 or more attack power unit and accomplishing nothing more than killing guardsmen tokens. Very often the Orcs player is going to find themselves having to plan in advance where they intend to deploy Nasdreg to get the most of his brutal keyword, and for that reason I think the Weird Boy Maniac can be a fantastic army unit to use in conjunction with Nasdreg, just because when it enters play, it can not only kill vulnerable enemy units, but potentially by adding damage tokens in advance to some of your own units, so long as they subsequently gain that brutal keyword, you're able to attack even harder than before, and in situations where they're not necessarily under the threat of immediate elimination or being sniped by ranged units or units with initiative, that could definitely work in your favor. And particularly if you manage to play that weird boy late in the deploy phase, it's quite possible that you can take your opponent by surprise with that play. I think another unit that works particularly well with Nasdreg, even though vehicles aren't necessarily the most popular of army units, are the Tank Busta Bombas, simply because adding to a unit's attack takes place before any multiplication, so that base 3 attack value unit receives its brutal attack bonus prior to being doubled, which, considering its pool of 4 hit points, could potentially allow it to destroy even the hardiest of vehicles in a single swing. Similar to the Weird Boy, the Orc Cannon support allows you to add additional damage to not only your opponent's units, but your own as well. And because you get to choose where you place that indirect damage, you can maximize the chances of that card working in your favor. And last but not least, if you manage to set it up correctly, I think one other army unit that has the potential of working exceptionally well with Nasdreg is the Chaos Faction Umbral Preacher. Not only because it has that high base pool of hit points that works with his brutal ability, but largely because it can prevent enemy army units from escaping decisive battles. Particularly if your opponent is running some very expensive, resource intensive army units and you have some relatively cheap, inexpensive units at that planet with your Warlord, it's quite possible that thanks to your Warlord's ability, they nevertheless have very high attack values. And although this unit's deployment is very visible, it can be easy to predict what's going to happen and your opponent can orchestrate dodging it relatively easily if you can force them into a combat situation by pinning your opponent's units in place you can really leverage brutal in your favor by ensuring that those enemy units can't escape they can't run away and hopefully you're able to make some very resource efficient trades in that combat to set you up in a favorable position for the remainder of the game, and if things are close, to hopefully secure the advantage being in your favor.
Although unfortunately this umbral preacher can't affect your enemy warlord, hopefully by eliminating enough enemy units you can nevertheless set yourself up to score an eventual bloodying or even warlord kill later down the line, or in any case to hopefully secure enough planets to eventually guarantee yourself the victory. But yet another army unit that synergizes in a fantastic sense with Nasdreg. The first card in his signature squad is the aptly named Nasdreg's Flash Gits, a three cost army unit with one command icon, the warrior and knob traits, an attack value of two, four hit points, and combat action. Deal this unit one damage to ready it, albeit limit once per phase. So, at a reasonable cost, this is a versatile, hardy unit that, particularly if you manage to give it the brutal keyword, has the potential of hitting very hard and potentially up to twice during that initial combat round. Even if you don't manage to give him the brutal keyword, he can nevertheless dispatch or destroy multiple weak targets or really inflict punishment on one large target, regardless as to whether the Warlord is present or not. And of course, if he does happen to accumulate a large number of damage tokens, if you are able to use that combat action, this army unit, even without attachments, can output a serious amount of damage. Really the only downside I can think of of Nasdreg's flash gits, outside of that somewhat steep initial resource investment, is that ability is limited to once per phase, not per combat round. And even though the prospect of taking a lot of damage and hitting particularly hard, if you happen to receive that brutal keyword, is very appealing, Dealing one damage counts as a cost, so if you find yourself running out of hit points, you become more and more exposed to being potentially ambushed, to being potentially killed by events, and if you're ever at one hit point, because that combat action incurs a cost, it's not a card effect or an attack that's dealing that damage, you do not receive the opportunity to play a shield card to reduce that damage to zero. So if you ever find yourself at one hit point remaining with this unit, if you happen to trigger that combat action, it's as good as killing your unit outright. And unless you're planning on dumping an Elysian Assault Squad into play, in most cases losing a unit, at least playing as the Orcs, doesn't do you much good. And another weakness worth noting about this ability is that if you happen to be at the same planet as the enemy warlord Zarathur, Dealing your unit one damage triggers that enemy warlord's ability, so that in order to ready this unit, you're required to deal yourself not one, but two points of damage, which is half of this three-cost army unit's pool of hit points in the first place. And always remember that as extra icing on the cake, in addition to Nasdreg's flash gets established aforementioned weaknesses, after you attack with this army unit and expend an action in order to damage and ready it, your opponent has an opportunity to respond in turn. So if it just so happens that they manage to destroy your weakened army unit, then you miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of that second attack that combat round. Certainly, under ideal circumstances, even if this starts off with a full pool of hit points, it can attack for two. If Nasdreg is at its location, you can trigger its combat action to have it attack again, this time for three. And if you pile attachments onto this unit, it can become all the more powerful. For instance, if you're in that exact same situation, but this time you have rune-encrusted armor attached to Nasdreg's flash gits, instead it attacks for four upon that initial swing, and then five for the second attack, and it'll still have five hit points remaining. So, as long as you can be conservative with your taking damage, so long as you can be smart and very careful, very analytical about playing cards that cause you to deal damage to your own units, 
Like so many other orc cards, Nosdreg's flash gets have the capability of being enormously powerful. Probably one of the absolute best cards to attach to Nosdreg's flash gets is the rocket launcher, so that even if you lose the initiative token, you can take advantage of multiple hard-hitting attacks during the range skirmish to destroy up to two enemy units during that initial round to really crank up the punishment on your enemy before they have any opportunity to react. And even if you aren't able to take advantage of that brutal keyword, there's nevertheless a multitude of different options that you can take advantage of to increase the attack power of any orc unit. For example, Battle Cry, although you have to wait for the first action window of a battle to actually play that event, can bolster the attack value of this unit, your warlord, and any other unit taking part in that battle by two, and if you're running the Astra Militarum as an allied faction, each copy of Katachan Outpost that you choose to trigger can add two attack to the next attack. And particularly if you're able to give this unit the ranged ability, that can be an enormously potent effect. Worth mentioning is that for any orc unit, Big Tooth Banna and Crush Face both function to reduce the cost of orc units, and the earlier those are played, the more use you can see out of their abilities, the more you can hopefully secure an early game lead, and then start a snowball doing better and better during each subsequent game round until you eventually, hopefully, inevitably attain victory. And really, last but not least, I'll just mention that if you're feeling particularly risky or are simply a glutton for punishment, you could risk playing Dire Mutation on any of your own units that happen to benefit from that brutal keyword. And although it places your own units in even greater jeopardy than ever, Particularly if you're able to bolster their hit points beyond their base value, each and every time you exhaust to attack, because that exhaustion happens prior to damage resolution, if you can benefit from that brutal keyword, your attack value will be all the higher for taking that additional point of damage. And like I mentioned before, if you do happen to lose any of these at times oh so fragile orc units, an Elysian assault team can help to at least alleviate some of the suffering you might feel from the unfortunate or entirely unexpected loss of one of your army units. Overall, though, no matter how you choose to use Nosdreg's Flash Gits, I think that this is an exceptionally powerful army unit, and certainly one for which you'll be happy to have four copies included in your deck. But next up, to counter the occasional frailty of orcs, we have the one-copy signature attachment, the Cyborg Body, with a cost of one and an enormous three shield icons, with the war gear and bionics traits, which reads, Attached to an Army Unit, Double Attached Units HP. So immediately coming to mind is that this card is incredibly cheap for its effect, it has a tremendous shield value, and as a result, taking everything into consideration, this is an extraordinarily powerful defensive card. Even though you can't deploy this on your Warlord, consider that there's no limit to the number of attachments that any one army unit can have, and consider again that additive effects take place before multiplicative ones. So for instance, if you were to deploy a hostile environment gear to an army unit, and then subsequently play a cyborg body on that, for the grand total cost of two resources, you increase that unit's base hit points not just by three, but you end up doubling that total. And as with so many of these cards, as our card pool for this living card game inevitably expands over time, this is only going to get better and better as we see more and more options for increasing hit points, in addition to myriad other effects.
This card synergizes perfectly with that brutal keyword in that it allows you to increase your attack value to still greater heights, but all of those same pitfalls remain. I mentioned before that it would be a damn shame to be spending a 10 attack value attack just to dispatch a guardsman token or some kind of equivalent, so remember that as you're playing orcs, particularly as you're playing Nasdreg, it's going to be a very careful balancing act to make sure that you attain the utmost combat efficiency out of all of your attacking units and various cards. As with every other one-copy signature card, I think it's extraordinarily unfortunate that your drawing it is going to be wildly inconsistent, so this could make all the difference in the world if you manage to get it in play at the opportune moment, but at that same time, this very well might sit in your deck, entirely unused and unseen for the entire game. That cost is extraordinarily efficient, extraordinarily affordable, but this could also be extraordinarily handy for saving your ass from having your warlord bloodied, just because Nasdreg in particular loses so much if he happens to be flipped to his bloodied side. This makes that rune-encrusted armor, chaos faction attachment I mentioned earlier all the better than it already is, and there are innumerable fantastic targets for this card. Whether it happens to be an expensive unit that you want hanging around for even longer than it otherwise would, or if you happen to have a relatively cheap unit that nevertheless could win some critical battle and turn the tide of the game in your favor, this ends up being a relatively versatile card in addition to how potentially powerful it is. I think perhaps one of the best targets for this attachment might end up being the Burna Boys, just because even though they have a pretty enormous 5 attack value, they do start with a fairly shallow pool of 3 hit points, and being able to take advantage of that additional point of damage tacked on to a unit other than the one that you're attacking as many times as possible can really prove to be extraordinarily valuable, particularly considering that the orcs, as a faction, don't really have access to any kind of area effect units outside of maybe allying with the Astra Militarum and deploying a Mordian Hellhound or two. But really, at this point in the game, it's hard to go wrong with what unit you stick this on to. I'll just mention once again, especially as you and your local meta, your local pool of players, start to open up and explore the contents of our various war packs, it remains of the utmost importance to know exactly what to expect from your opponent. Just because we start to see more and more removal cards, some of which distinctly prey upon low-cost orc units that might end up wasting your playing this nearly invaluable attachment. Next, in Nasdrag's signature squad, we have the two-cost support, Cracktooth Hall. With the location trait and the text, Combat Action, exhaust this support to move one damage from a target unit you control to another target unit at the same planet. So right off the bat, what is absolutely fantastic about this card is that once per round, it allows you to redistribute damage. You can compensate for your own mathematical errors. It allows you to take even better advantage of that brutal keyword because you can attack, benefit from having damage on your attacking unit, and then shift that point of damage during your action window to a unit that hasn't attacked yet so that you can use that one point of damage in your favor twice. There's an action window before any actual fighting occurs as well, and I think it's of the utmost importance to realize that this doesn't just allow you to shift damage between your own units, but you can actually move damage from your units onto a weak or vulnerable enemy unit. And whether it kills that unit outright, 
or sets it up to be killed by one of your units later on so that you can try to make as efficient a kill as possible, remember that 7 attack, eliminating 7 hit points, is one hell of a lot more efficient than that same 7 attack killing a 1 hit point unit, and because this is moving damage, According to our rules reference book, moved damage specifically bypasses all damage prevention and reassignment opportunities, so your opponent cannot shield against this effect, which allows you the potential of reliably killing wounded or otherwise low hit point frail units. So whether it's something like a Rattling Deadeye or Sybarite Marksman, one of those ranged units with a single Single hit point, whether it's something like a rogue trader, a void pirate, or any other very squishy unit, so long as you've got a unit that's wounded at that planet, you can use this to fantastic effect. Particularly if you don't have the initiative token, this can allow you a fantastic opportunity to swing the tide of a battle ever so slightly or even critically in your favor. This is very similar to an armor bane effect, which is devastatingly powerful and which we see on extraordinarily few cards. Particularly within the core set alone, there's very little damage that is impossible to prevent in this game. Really, the only drawbacks to this are that, like I mentioned, you have to have a damaged unit at that planet, one copy of this being in your deck means that it's going to be wildly inconsistent as to when you draw it. That initial investment might be pretty steep if you end up drawing this at an inopportune moment, or it might not do much for you depending on the state of the board. And of course, it has to be used in the combat phase, although you are indeed given that combat window before any battles take place. So all in all, this has the potential of being great. It does have the potential of not doing a whole lot, but considering even small synergies like bad dock, so long as you can shift a point of damage to the ideal unit, you can draw some pretty serious benefit from that. As is the case for that army unit I just mentioned, which generates an enormous three additional command icons if it happens to be wounded. So, although it's not always going to work out, this certainly has the potential of being a tremendous asset to you. Last but not least, to round out Nasdreg's signature squad, we have two copies of the zero-cost event, Bigga is Beta. With one shield icon, the tactic trait, and the text interrupt. When you deploy an orc unit, reduce its cost by two. Deal one damage to that unit after it enters play. So, what immediately jumps out to me about this card is that cost reduction is almost never a bad thing. This can provide an absolutely fantastic tempo advantage, particularly in the early game, in that for any orc unit you're interested in playing, it ultimately saves you two resources. And those two resources can in turn be spent elsewhere, whether that's winning command struggles, winning combats, whatever it happens to be, the earlier you can establish a foothold on the board against your opponent, the earlier the game is going to start going well for you. So the earlier you draw one or both copies of this event, the better. So that hopefully you'll be able to snowball your way toward an eventual victory. As with any other card, always remember that the later you can play this during the deployment phase, the better, because you'll have all the more information to draw from, and if you get your opponent to pass, if you can end up playing more actions than they have, if they don't have any more tricks to dump on the table, or they end up deploying their trump card, it's entirely possible that they won't be able to predict your having this in your hand.
Take, for instance, the Weird Boy Maniac. If you only have a single resource token left in your resource pool, they might not at all expect you to dump this event into play and then put that Weird Boy into play. So if they're counting on no surprises or nasty tricks coming out of you, if they've already laid all their cards out onto the table, you could really take advantage of your opponent and potentially use this card to facilitate other cards dealing some devastating blows to your opponent. It is important to note that you take a point of damage when you play this card, but that too can work in your favor. Whether you're using Nasdreg for his brutal ability so that the unit you put into play with this event ends up hitting all the harder, or instead you're using some sort of clever synergistic effect like playing Bad Doc with this event so that it enters play with three command icons, there are a number of different ways you can use this damage in your favor. Or, if under no circumstance can you afford to soften up a unit, even ever so slightly through this card, it is entirely possible that in this case, since dealing that damage isn't actually part of the cost required to play this event, that you can simply expend a shield card in order to prevent it. Of the 13 different orc units you have to choose from when it comes time to picking an orc unit to deploy, I feel there are definitely some core set standouts. Not only Bad Doc, like I mentioned earlier, but also some of those really expensive, hard-hitting units, like Goff Knob, which normally costs 5, but has 6 hit points and 6 attack. So the earlier you can get that big, nasty orc into play, whether or not you have Nasdreg at that planet, you can really start inflicting some serious damage and threatening your opponent's more expensive units as early as possible. And the same goes for the four-cost Rugged Killa Cans, particularly because it can't take advantage of any kind of war gear, putting that 2-5 onto the table that in addition, with or without your Warlord present has that brutal keyword, can take full advantage of not just that cost reduction, but also that single point of damage to really start inflicting some serious punishment upon your opponents. And last but not least, I'll just mention that the Enraged Orc, although relatively inexpensive compared to some of those other Orc units, you end up being able to deploy that for free, and given that it too naturally possesses that brutal keyword, ends up entering play as a 1-4. And considering that attacking isn't optional, as that accrues more and more damage over time, that extremely inexpensive and with this event extraordinarily affordable units can also pose a significant threat to your opponent's units. But now that we've covered Nasdreg and his signature squad in its entirety, that brings this video to a close. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. If you have an opinion you'd like to share about Nasdreg, the Orc faction as a whole, or any of this Warlord signature squad that I covered in this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you've had any play experiences with the Orcs that you'd like to share, I would absolutely love to read those comments, particularly because Nasdreg is regarded as one of the weaker, more difficult to master Warlords of the core set. I'd love to hear any play tips that you have that you'd like to share, just because I myself am a relative newcomer to this game, and like so many of my viewers, could definitely benefit from the wisdom of more experienced players.
Engagement with viewers like yourself helps to promote this video in the search rankings, and the more that we can build up this community, the better Conquest players we can in turn all become. So, I'll just close this video by saying thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you again soon.